British Railway version 1.1 was released yesterday, featuring the Class 90, the Voyager, and some route extensions. We'll also be talking a bunch about SCR, including the small patch update, my new training experience, and SCR application form updates. And don't forget, we got a lot of catching up to do, ranging from Croydon updates to even Canterbury updates for version 4.2. That's what's coming on tonight's Roblox Transport News. Hello and welcome to RTN, my name is Pangtastic, reporting the news on the 19th of March 2023. But first I would like to mention that Creator Hub, a stock footage website for SCR, will be coming on the 25th of March at 7pm GMT time, not sponsored. Anyways, let's take a look at the most important headline of all, British Railway version 1.1. That's right, the update, also known as in the Intercity update, was in the works for quite a long time now, and finally the game has been updated to this major patch. Let's start with the stations. A bunch of stations have been updated, such as Abbey Road, both Longbow stations, Victoria Harbour, Freston Junction, Leeton, and Whetstone. New stations have been opened, and those are Victoria Docks, Newhouse, Forestdale, Astley, Hume Heath, Sterling Street, and Norrington. There are also some closures with Watbury Castle being completely closed and Palmer's Road being removed. Now onto the routes. The entire system has been rewritten with the three new types, which are empty coach services, semi-fast and intercity. Some earnings have been adjusted, which means longer routes will earn more coins per hour. Station passes are now included in routes. And of course, the Norrington pack has been released. Relating to trains, the Class 90, the Class 220 and 221, which are Voyagers, are now in the game. Plus, there are now double units for the Class 170. Let's not forget about the liveries. There's now new liveries such as Intercity, 4, Virgo, Cross Country, Silk, West Coast, White, and Strathclyde. And finally, some miscellaneous stuff like streaming enabled, a life map being reintroduced, a redesigned notification stack, user profile AI, and many bug fixes. Overall, it's huge. A, a huge update. I hope you guys out there are really enjoying this update, and honestly, I love this. This update was executed perfectly. I can't wait to play this game even further, and hope you are as well. Now moving from this huge update that BR created, let's focus on to the SCR stuff. Firstly, a minor update was released yesterday. They've updated the game with disruption events now being announced in the chat by the system, telling you what's the event, where does it occur, and when will it start or end. There's now also a new chat UI based on Roblox's new chat system. Unfortunately, you can't resize the chat anymore, you can't use eDance, and you can only use the emote system. And also there's various internal system improvements and fixes. Not bad. This update is quite handy, even though there's nothing much. And in my experience, the gameplay feels a lot smoother, probably from those bug fixes and improvements. Well done to the devs for doing something about it. Staying on to the topic, let's go all the way back to version 1.10.4, because I am talking about the new training map in SCR. I want to talk about my experience since I've rejoined the SCR Roblox group again, and I want to see what these training sessions are like. I went from TD to Guard in just under a week. Here's my experience. In all these training sessions, you have to be in a briefing room where you sit down while SCR supervisors are looking at your soul, demonstrating a few things before you begin assessing. As usual, you wait till you're assessed. There are four replicas to the training map, ranging from A to D. This is more efficient since there's better organization and you can assess more trainees in a faster and more efficient way. For driving, you can drive from Elzemir Pond, Holton Rake, and to Greenslade, or the other way around. I know, very cursed. But I like this, since as a beginner, you explore various places in just a couple of minutes while being trained, and you haven't been to those places in-game. So, this is more entertaining for the trainee. For dispatching, I don't think there's really any order, but you just dispatch at any station other than Greenslade. Correct me if I'm wrong though. The first station will be without a guard, and the second station will be with a guard. And finally, while guarding, you guard from one station to guard alone, and go to another station to guard with a dispatcher. Overall, I like this new training map. It feels really professional, whereas before, you just go to a station, line up, and get assessed in the whole map. This is different, and I like this. I managed to flawlessly pass all of them, even though the first training was cancelled due to the host leaving and no other co-hosts. But that's, that's not a problem. Overall, I give this training and 9 Dispatch Bats out of 11. <laughs> Moving away from SCR temporarily, let's catch up with a transport game we haven't mentioned before, which is Canterbury and District. 
Currently, they're working on an update for version 4.2 and they've reached 50 million visits. So well done to them. Around three months ago, they've began working on a beta version for 4.2, which will include a bunch of features that will be mentioned in just a moment. They've said that the beta version is almost complete and will begin public testing as soon as they're able to. Those features include AI passengers, improved bus handling, tutorial for new players, return of door sounds, indicator sounds, etc. to all buses, new lighting, big UI update with many of the GUIs replaced or significantly improved, bus station refurbishments with new textures, shelters, and much more, rewritten code base which will allow us to implement large features in a much quicker time frame, and general QOL improvements. Well, I'm not sure about you guys, but this update seems to be quite of a big deal. I wish them good luck on their beta testing and I can't wait for it. Stay tuned on their Discord server for more details. We're not done with the catching up stuff. Let's move to Centro. Firstly, Croydon seems to have some good progress. Scenery wise, there is some new roads being connected and such. With the buses itself, there will be rail replacement services, new buses such as the Unilink MMC and an Omni City, which will be part of the additional fleet for the Compass Blue Star pack coming to Croydon. Other features show curtailments being now fitted and you are able to change your destination at any point along the route, as long as you haven't passed it already. Plus a live map showing how delayed or early any buses. This information may be used for countdown boards at bus stops in the future. We also show the gigantic size of this map from this preview. And finally, a new Enviro being worked at the moment. Let's now go to the Victoria Line updates. Firstly, the train itself being on Euston Station, very cool. Second, King's Cross St. Pancras, very nice. Here's Euston once again, very huge station. It will actually be nearly fully explorable in the game, with enough resources on every walkway until the exit, so that's good to hear. Here's Highbury Islington, even with the Northern City Line platforms. Love the depth of the station. Here's Finsbury Park, which is where we are up to now. And finally, the geometry of the tracks. These tracks are as close to real life, thanks to some geometrical maths, so that's actually quite interesting. And as an extra preview, here's the distance between Warren Street and Houston. Approximately three and a half tube trains. The more you know. Well, that is all for these central updates. A lot of work has been done already from the knife and much, so big props for the grit and termination to keep working on these games. And finally, the SCR application forms. This time, the updates are eye-catching. The LD application process is now officially complete. The results of the applications will be revealed in two days. Good luck to those who applied, and hopefully some of the right people will become LD. For CDU dispatches, you still have to wait. Currently, the reading and writing feedback is nearly done. Same with creating a rough shortlist. They're halfway on rereading applications they were unsure of and performing background checks. However, they still haven't started reprocessing failed applications and creating a final shortlist. So yep, it will take some time. Maybe a month or two. For future senior signalers, I can pretty much say the same thing. They are still in progress on implementing changes to the SSG training program, performing background checks, and finalizing feedback for AR pass applicants. The only thing they haven't started on was filtering the shortlist to final. So yep, maybe two months is a reasonable estimation time of completion. You are now up to date with their progress. Well, that was quite a lot to talk about. Hopefully you've been informed on what's been happening in the Roblox transport community. That's all for today's RTN. Thank you for watching and goodbye.